Compared to Asia and North America, Europe surprisingly has fewer skyscrapers. This is surprising because it is a highly developed, densely populated, and an economically prosperous continent. Just five cities in Europe, such as London, Istanbul, Moscow, Paris, and Frankfurt, have embraced skyscrapers. These five cities account for 66% of the 218 skyscrapers constructed on the continent so far. In this video, we'll be looking at the pros and cons of skyscrapers and why Europe never builds them. Let us get started right away. So, if you've ever wandered around Europe or had the chance to explore it, you might have noticed something pretty different about its cities compared to the bustling metropolises of Asia or North America. And you guessed it, skyscrapers are a rare sight here. I mean, take a look around in places like Tokyo, Seoul, Taipei, or New York, and you'll see towering buildings stretching towards the sky. But in Europe? Not so much. As of 2023, you can count the number of super tall buildings, those over 190 meters, on your fingers. They are mostly clustered in just five cities which we mentioned earlier. So why is that so? Why doesn't Europe jump on the skyscraper rush like every other continent? It's a question that has been on many minds, considering Europe's ancient history and all. Let's dive in and find out, shall we? As the US embarked on its skyscraper construction journey, most European cities were already deep in history. This left little room for towering structures. Their growth over the years resulted in evenly zoned cities, preserving their distinctive charm. Take Lisbon, for instance, where Eduardo Seven Park offers a stunning panoramic view, encompassing the park and the river below. Imagine if towering structures, reaching 490 feet in height, were suddenly upon this serene landscape. The view would be damaged, the iconic avenue would be concealed, and the river relegated to mere memory amidst the towering buildings. What if, disregarding this cultural legacy, one opted to pack a European gem like Prague with skyscrapers? Such a decision would demand the destruction of cherished landmarks, causing the uproar of their inhabitants who have been deeply attached to their city's rich heritage. Discontent would rise as familiar landmarks vanished. It would be replaced by impersonal towers, erasing the very essence of their dear city. But was this reason enough to make Europe not build skyscrapers? Certainly not. Let's keep watching. In the busy hearts of cities like London, Paris, and Berlin, finding land is like hunting for treasure, rare and incredibly pricey. If you dream of skyscrapers, be prepared for a regulatory back and forth. Developers face a mountain of rules just to get started, from zoning laws to building codes. While these rules aim to protect the city's charm, they also prevent sky-high ambitions. Building a skyscraper here doesn't just require deep pockets. It demands a bank vault. With costs soaring, many developers just go for more modest, compact structures instead. In this urban drag between tradition and modernity, each step forward is carefully choreographed. This ensures the cityscape retains its unique character while embracing progress. In the Soviet Union, they were building up these dull, practical mid-rise blocks left and right. People weren't exactly thrilled about the idea of living in tower blocks, so they set up some rules to make sure that Europe's beauty wasn't diminished by these architectural buildings. They made architects promise to keep the city's cultural feel alive in any new buildings they designed. Some cities even carved out specific zones just for skyscrapers, so they wouldn't mess with the historical heart of the city. Places like Canary Wharf in London and La Defense in Paris are prime examples of this. Also, London also had some serious rules in place to protect its iconic landmarks, like St. Paul's Cathedral and Big Ben. Architects couldn't just come in and block those famous views. They were to work around them, preserving London's skyline while still making room for new projects. Then, around the year 1960, something huge happened in Europe. What could it be? Brusselization. Well, Brusselization happened. Ever heard of Brusselization? Back in the 1960s and 70s, Brussels went through this rapid modernization phase. They called it Brusselization. They were bringing down a lot of old buildings and building up new high-rise ones everywhere. However, a lot of people weren't happy about it. They said these new buildings didn't fit the city's vibe and were ruining its historic charm. So, people started pushing for stricter building rules to protect their heritage. And not just in Brussels, other European cities took notice too. The whole Brusselization served as a reminder to city planners and developers not to forget about the soul of their city while chasing progress. Post-war rebuild. As if things couldn't get any worse, the Second World War happened. You know, you would expect Europe to revamp its cities after the chaos of World War II, right? But no, they went the opposite way. Instead of going all modern, 
they decided to bring back a lot of the old vibes, heritage, and traditions that were wiped out during the war. So they just recreated the old school architectural styles. And let me tell you, it's a sight to behold with all those gorgeous low rise buildings popping up everywhere. After the war, there weren't as many people around therefore, the whole skyscraper rush never really took off. Moving on, do you know what makes strolling through European cities so special? It's those low skylines that let you take in every detail of the beautiful architecture. Instead of craning your neck to see towering skyscrapers, you get to appreciate each building up close. And when you do find a spot with a bit of elevation, bam, you are treated to a breathtaking view of the whole city spread out before you. Back in the day, churches were the big shots in town, towering over everything else. So places like Prague, Cologne, Amsterdam, and St. Petersburg still boast stunning skylines but not the kind filled with skyscrapers, more like a charming mix of historic buildings that tell a story of centuries gone by. By the time we hit the 21st century, people in Europe started warming up to the idea of tall buildings. Architects were ditching the old boxy designs for more eye-catching and unique styles. With the world getting more connected, why not? Fast forward to the early 2000s, major financial hubs like London, Paris, Moscow, Istanbul, and Frankfurt started building skyscrapers left and right. With businesses needing more space in the heart of these cities, it was the perfect time for some vertical expansion. On the other side, smaller European cities that haven't exploded in size are putting their energy into making life better for their people and protecting the environment. Places like Scandinavia and Central Europe have been killing it in recent years when it comes to sustainability, happiness, and overall well-being, and they're doing it while still being big players in their country's economies. But nowadays, building skyscrapers isn't just about making money or finding office space. It's more about adapting to a changing world. More and more people are flocking to urban areas. On a more serious note, 60% of the world's population is expected to be living in cities by 2030. There's a huge demand for places to live. Guess what's popping up to meet that demand? You thought right, the residential skyscrapers. As traditional rural jobs get automated, people are trading in farm life for the hustle and bustle of city living. And that means cities need to go high up to make room for everyone. Europe isn't sitting on the sidelines of this trend, especially in a world where everything's connected and there's this constant pressure to keep up with the big people like China and the US. So who knows, Europe might be preparing for a skyscraper rush in the years to come. Currently, Europe is not just about chasing after the tallest buildings. They're all about preserving their history and culture, and with whole urban areas being hailed as historical treasures, and people determined to keep the old vibes alive, the challenge for future skyscraper projects in Europe is all about finding that delicate balance between past and present. With skyscrapers popping in some parts of Europe and beyond, finding your way inside these towering structures can be a bit of a maze. But fear not, because there's always a solution to every problem, and that's where indoor mapping technologies comes in. These tools hooks you up with accurate, detailed maps of the building's insides. So whether you're a visitor or an employee, you can navigate like a pro without issues. Plus, these maps come in multiple languages, making them a lifesaver in diverse places like European cities, where you've got people speaking diverse languages. And it gets even cooler. Some indoor positioning tech takes things up a notch by giving you real-time updates on exactly where you are inside the building. How? Well, they use Wi-Fi fingerprinting technology to pinpoint your location with precision. Imagine you're wandering around a massive building and you're not sure where to go. With such technologies, you can get turn-by-turn -turn directions right on your phone. And in emergencies, this tech is best. It helps first responders locate people who need help in a flash. That's very neat if you ask me. Sure, skyscrapers bring their own set of challenges to European cities. But guess what? Indoor mapping and positioning tech are here to save the day. Imagine having all the extreme details about a building's insides right at your fingertips. This tech gives you accurate, up-to-the-minute info, making buildings safer, more efficient, and easier on the planet. As Europe keeps on evolving, it's crucial to hop on board with these technological advancements. They're like the key to unlocking a future that's both bright and sustainable. In Europe, the future of building tall structures is up in the air. Cities are caught in a tug of war between preserving their rich history and meeting the demands of their ever-changing populations. It's like trying to find the perfect balance between tradition and progress. As they navigate this tricky path, you can bet that skyscrapers will stay a hot topic among the people calling the shots. Architects, urban planners, 
and big cities alike. So get ready, because the debate isn't going anywhere anytime soon. What do you think about Europe's resistance to adopt skyscrapers? Do you think their aim of preserving their cultural landmarks is an understandable reason for them to throw away the idea of skyscrapers? Do you also also feel that their strict rules against building skyscrapers is unfair to inhabitants of Europe who would have wanted to? We really want to know what you think. Let us know in the comment section below. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get more amazing videos.